The microphones are not in the for the participants. You have to make everything. Yes. Yeah. Now, Eric. Um, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, they tell me that you send us your presentation no, through an email, but we can't open it. So I was thinking if you could present your presentation online, you can project your screen and in that way you can present. Yeah. Uh, oh, perfect. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, we um, can. We can hear you, we can see your screen. So now uh, for the first uh, work, we present the session two of computer science and computer engineering system analysis. So welcome Eric and please present your work. Uh, well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Eric Martinez. Uh, the title of this presentation is Parameter Selection of Generalized Morse Wavelets for Water Leakage Classification. Uh, the outline of this presentation is as follows. Uh, first, I will make a brief introduction about the topic and uh, the methods that we use, uh, the results uh, and the conclusions. Sorry, Eric, can you please turn on your webcam? Um, I will try. I think it's, it is not working well. I don't know if you okay. can see me. No, we can see oh. you, but uh, now it's on so. No problem. Continue. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, well, uh, the outline is as follows. First, I will make a brief introduction about the topic, and then I will talk about the methods, the results, and the conclusions. So, well, uh, first, uh, water distribution networks are affected by the loss of treated water uh, from pipeline leakages. Uh, these water losses can represent between the 15 to 50% 50 of the total water volume. And these water leakages are produced by aging pipelines or, or salt subsidians. Um, and the presence of these water leakages can produce water scarcity, water contamination, traffic delay, and maintenance costs. So this, the problem of water leakage detection has motivated different methods to detect them in the literature. For instance, uh, one of the common approaches is to use surveys. Uh, the problem of using service is that they are time consuming, expensive, and unreliable. Also, we can use hardware methods, uh, for instance, thermography, gas injection, and acoustic monitoring. Uh, but the problem of also of hardware methods is that they are time consuming and expensive. And on the other hand, we can use software methods like hydraulic models. But the problem for generating hydraulic models is that we know we require to know. Uh, parameters of the water network pipeline, such as the pipe parameters, the aging of the pipe, and also the water consumption that is uh, performed in the water network. Uh, another approach uh, is to use data-driven methods. Um, the main advantage of, the, of using data-driven methods is that they do not require to know the exact parameters of the water network, and also it's less expensive compared to hardware methods. In this regard, uh, in particular, machine learning techniques have been used um, to perform water leakage detection um, by employing flow, pressure, acoustic, and vibration data from the water network. And common techniques that we can find in the literature are the logistic regression, neural networks, and convolutional neural networks. Uh, but one of the key problems of using these machine learning techniques is that we need to perform feature extraction. Uh, this feature extraction process uh, of the signal under interest should be performed in the time, the frequency and time frequency analysis. But the problem is that, well, how can we compute features using these uh, representations? In particular, for the case of using time frequency analysis, uh, such as the wavelet transform, it is very challenging to know uh, how we can perform this signal decomposition uh, because we have a diverse, a diverse var a variety um, of wavelet uh, functions to perform the signal decomposition. And the challenge of selecting a wavelet is related to the Heisenberg or uncertainty in principle, and also the diverse set of wavelet families that we have, such as the Gaussian, Basel, Morlet, and Shannon wavelets. So in this sense, uh, we have a lot of wavelet functions, 
uh, to perform this time frequency decomposition, but there are no precise guidelines to select this wavelength function and then uh, perform feature extraction or signal representation using these techniques. So in this work, uh, what we proposed was to use a family of wavelets known as the generalized Morse wavelets. Uh, here I am showing the frequency domain representation of these wavelets. Uh, they are uh, characterized by two parameters, a beta parameter and a gamma parameter. And this gamma and beta parameter basically can allow us to control the the in the form of the wavelet in the time and frequency domain the beta parameter allows us to control the uh, form of the wavelet in the frequent in the time domain and the gamma parameter the form of the wavelet in the frequency domain and we can uh, compute uh, or the heisenberg area to determine what is the best value of gamma uh, for these wavelet functions uh, basically, the Heisenberg area is the product of the of the standard deviation of the wavelet in the time and frequency domains. And here in Figure One, uh, what I'm showing is how um, the Heisenberg area changes by changing the value of beta and fixing the gamma equals to three. Here we are fixing the gamma, the value of gamma equals to three, because we know that for gamma equals to three the generalized Morse wavelets approximate the lower bound of the Heisenberg area, that is 0 0.5. And in figure one in the right, we are showing how the standard deviation of this wavelet family changes by varying the value of beta and fixing the value of gamma equals to three. Here, uh, the blue is the standard deviation in the time domain, and in red is the standard deviation in the frequency domain. So here we have like a trade-off of how the function is concentrated in both domains. If we increase the value of beta, we have a lower resolution in the time domain, but maybe we can have a, a higher real resolution in the frequency domain. So in order to set the value of beta, uh, what we decided to compute was what we call here the reconstruction error. Basically, what we are doing is uh, we know that the wavelet transform is essentially a correlation between the wavelet and the function of interest. So by taking this into account, we decided to apply the wavelet transform by fixing the parameters of the generalized Morse wavelets. We obtain the wavelet coefficients. We can compute an inverse wavelet transform, and we will obtain a reconstructed version of the signal. And we expected that the original signal and the reconstructed version, uh, its error should be equal to zero. So what we basically did was to change this, the parameters of the wavelet transform, and compute the square error, and uh, to determine the optimal one, we compute or we check the average of all the errors of all the data sets. And to do, uh, the, by doing this, we obtain a scalogram of the signal that we want to analyze, and we uh, train a convolutional neural network. Uh, in particular, uh, we were using transfer learning for this purpose. Okay. So uh, the data set uh, that we use for this purpose was collected from two water networks, one loop water network and a branch water network. Uh, and uh, which, uh, the data set consisted of five leakages types, circumferential, longitudinal, orifice, gasket, and no leak. And in particular, uh, the vibration or the vibration response of the water network to these leak gen leaks generated at the center of the water network uh, were uh, measured using accelerometers in the positions of A1 and A2 in this water network. So essentially what we are doing is to uh, use the response of this vibration data to classify these two, uh, these five water leak types in, in these two water networks. So uh, by computing these uh, reconstruction errors of the, of the signals, uh, here we obtain the surface of, this, of the reconstruction error by changing the value of beta and the number of voices per octave of the wavelet transform. This is for the acceleration data associated with the branch water network. And in the right is the, um, the surface of the error by changing the value of beta and voices per octave for the loop water network using the same acceleration data. Here uh, we obtain the minimum at beta equals to two and two voices per octave for the branch water network and for the loop water network we obtain a beta equals to 1.66 um, and one voice per octave. So by doing 
by selecting these parameterizations, uh, we generate the scalagrams for each of the water leak types of the acceleration data for the branch and loop water networks. This is shown in figure five in the left. And with these scalagrams, we fine tune uh, the Google Net uh, that is based on the assumption module. Uh, here we are basically taking these scalagrams and fine tuning this uh, pre trained uh, convolutional neural network. And uh, here in figure seven, we are showing the training process of the Google Net using these scalagrams of the acceleration data for the branch water network. Uh, these are the training curves for the accuracy and also the loss of the model in the left and in the right is for the loop water network. Uh, but again, it's the, the behavior of the training process uh, using the acceleration data and uh, fine tuning the Google Net. Uh, here uh, we are showing the summary of the results by performing this process. Um, well, here uh, we use 80% of the data set for training the model, and we left 20% of the data set for testing the model. So here, uh, what we are showing is the training and uh, training and validation accuracies. And in particular, we are interested in the testing accuracy of this approach. That for the low water network, we obtain a value of 70, 80.33%. And for the branch water network, we obtain a value of 76.25%. So, well, as conclusions, uh, well, in this study, what we proposed was to use the Heisenberg area and the average reconstruction uh, mean square error to select the parameters of the generalized Morse wavelets to produce a scalagram of, of acceleration data to perform water leakage classification in loop and, bran and branch water networks. Uh, the above led to select a uh, beta equals to 1.61 and, and one voice per octave for the scalagram of the acceleration data associated with the loop water network, while a beta equals to two and two voices per octave, per octave were selected for the scalagrams of acceleration data related to the branch water network. Uh, the generated scalagrams uh, were used to fine tune the Google Net, producing a testing accuracy of 78.33% for the loop water network and 76.25% for the branch water network. Uh, here, uh, well, what we propose as future research directions is that uh, we want to also use this approach to classify these water leakages by applying uh, pressure and acoustic data and see how this methodology performs against the use of uh, acceleration data. Uh, these are the main reference of this presentation. Um, that's all for me. I don't know if you have some comment or question regarding this uh, presentation. You have a question? You have to see the outlets. Keep it on out and by conference. There's no question. <coughs> In this way, we can improve your um, the approximation of the I find the accuracy of the results because it, uh, is, well, low, it is low that the data you presented. Mm. In this way, we can improve the accuracy of the results. Well, uh, we have not tested other approaches uh, for this data set. Um, maybe uh, at least we only have compared um, or, or tested these two methods, the, sorry, this, this particular method, but uh, also we want to test uh, less simple ones. For instance, uh, we want to compute features of this, uh, each of each one of these leak types. But to do that, uh, and also use less expensive machine learning techniques, for instance, a support vector machine or, or a decision tree. But uh, we have found the challenge of computed adequate features for each one of these uh, leak types, because in the literature, commonly the problem is solved as a binary classification tasks in which they only want to detect the presence of the absence or the leak of the leak types. But here, the challenge that we have with this data set is that we have uh, four different leak types that are the circumferential, longitudinal, orifice, and gasket leaks. So we need to be very careful 
into how we compute these features in order to train a more uh, less simple classifier like the support vector regression or decision tree and that's why uh, in our in this approach uh, well we wanted to first select the parameters of these morse wavelets that's like the main point of this um work but uh, that's why also we want we opted in this first instance to use these pre-trained convolutional neural networks in order to avoid the handcrafting features for all these individual leak types and that's why we were using these scalograms to fine-tune this neural network but uh, as you mentioned maybe we need to, well we need to spend more time in defining which are the most appropriate features that we need to compute for this for each leak type in order to produce um, a, a result that can be comparable to the uh, neural networks that we have trained here Yes, but what is the principal aim of your research in these selection parameters of the parameters? Uh, here, here what we are um, trying is to propose this method to select the parameters of the Morse wavelets. Um, if we look at the literature um, of these wavelets functions, uh, or we look at the, um, or the way these parameters are selected, there is like a certain bias because in most of the literature, uh, the authors did not report which are the parameters that they are selected or how they choose certain parameters. And this is like an open question, no? And another problem that we have find by when we want to use this wavelet transform is that um, in some cases, uh, the selection of this wavelet is, is carried out arbitrarily. No, there is no there is no just justification related to why they choose a wavelet and how that wavelet was parametricized. No, that's why we want to fill this gap to say, well, you can select this wavelet family. You have two parameters. You can control the form of this wavelet using these two parameters. But aside from that, you can select these parameters using the Heisenberg area. Um, that is a metric that we can compute and also the reconstruction error. No, that's the main point no? of, of filling this gap of how can we select or appropriate, appropriately select this uh, wavelength function and perform the signal and composition. Thank you very much for your presentation. Okay. The next presentation is uh, Presented by Marco Antonio Silva Maldonado. Development of wine speed forecast modeling using artificial intelligence in Mexicali. ¿Y te? Marco Antonio Silva Maldonado. Carlos Adolfo Casta. Cárdenas Flores, por Marco Antonio Silva Maldonado, Jesús Emiliano Chávez García, o Jesús Adán Ibarra Castro, o Reyes Ap Apolono Apolonio Castro Corral, a Marco Antonio Eduardo Cruz Victorio. Son one of these autos, are there? We follow with the program with Mukart after for rainfall prediction and real time weather monitoring in Bangladesh, a comparative analysis of machine learning algorithm. Is there? Is there Mohamed Sakif, Hamid Mia, Mukart, Janet Fardus, Charmin after? Or Mohammed Is there one of these after? Yeah, we have the yeah. book after. Yeah. Is it nineteen sixty? Is there one of the other for rainfall prediction and real-time weather monitoring in Bangladesh, 
a comparative analysis of machine learning algorithms. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, Halif, uh, can you please, uh, our presenter Halif Mia will present the presentation. Hanif, is there? Hanif. Can you share your screen? Mohammed? Uh, Hanif will present uh, the uh, slides. Hanif Mia, he's our presenter. Hanif, please share your screen, Hanif. Okay, give me a moment. Hello, Hanif. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. We can begin your presentation. Can you share your uh, slide, please? Sure, ma'am. Anis, please, can you turn on your welcome? Uh, okay, sir. Assalamu alaikum. This is Hanif Mia, Department of EC, Institute of, Thet Institute of Science, Trade and Technology, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Today, I am presenting my a research paper. The paper ID is 96 and the title is Rainfall Prediction and the Real-Time Weather Monitoring in Bangladesh, a Comparative Analysis of Machine Learning Algorithms. Uh, move on to the next slide. Here is our abstract. Our research is a advanced technology integration with cloud, IoT, and sensor for real-time weather monitoring. This study leverages various classification algorithms, linear regression, decision tree, k nearest neighbor, support vector machine, and the native bias for rainfall prediction algorithm, multiple sensor for real-time weather monitoring. Utilizing a data set from Bangladesh Meteorological Department, spanning from 1970 to 2016, the study evaluates the performance of these classification algorithms based on precision, recall, F1 score, and the accuracy. From that, the decision tree algorithm achieved the highest accuracy that was 86% and the F1 score was 92%. And the SVM algorithm recorded the lowest accuracy which was 53% and the F1 score was 67%. Notably, all models exhibited higher F1 scores relative to their accuracy matrix. Our system offers a potential for accurate environmental assessment and improved weather prediction. The purpose of our study is to develop an integrated system for accurate rainfall prediction and real-time weather monitoring using various classification algorithms and environmental sensors, leveraging cloud platforms and IoT technologies 
to enhance the precision of weather assessments, especially in the contents of climate change and the believability. In our injection, we also discussed about the rainfall prediction where we used publicly available data set for the prediction. We used multiple machine learning models, IoT techniques to enhance the prediction of weather monitoring. For that, we use some features like temperature, humidity, cloud, sunshine. Our weather monitoring sens sensors are, are MQ7, MQ135, DTS22, BMP280, GYML B511, and the rain sensor. And the, our more, uh, machine learning models are L, uh, LRDT, KNN, SBM, NB, ETC. Numerous research endeavors have utilized various machine learning techniques to accurately predict rainfall and improve wireless sensor for weather modern application as documented in the literature. We would many kind of papers and studies where the authors, many of the authors used IoT based system. Many of the authors build the only machine learning based system, but we used both of the system, the IoT based with the monitoring system, also the machine learning with the monitoring system for predict the rainfall detection. This section outlined the techniques and tool used to leverage various weather features for rainfall prediction. Also, the sensor are deployed to collect data within the geographic coordinates in Dhaka, Bangladesh. The experimental methodology is illustrated blue in the figure, where we collected the data from Kringle data set in Bangladesh. After collecting the data, we pre-process the data, then the model evaluation by the machine learning models and i also see here the uh, hardware implementation where we used arduino uno with the sensor and the, for the internet provider as an internet provider we use esp8266 and we used a remote uh, website for see our result uh, which is thingspeak api for remove the noise from our signal, we use our normalization ensure constancy in features scaling uh, equation. Also, in this section, we see a, a table with the features used as predictor. As I already said, we used a predictor as a predictor, temperature, humidity, wind speed, clouds, sunshine, etc. In this slide, we can see the correlation matrix of showing the correlation between the predictors is showing in the panel. Uh, in the picture, uh, the x-axis obtain some values uh, such as uh, max temperature, minimum temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, uh, axis, uh, axis correlation. It is also uh, the same values in the y-axis. Our device architecture and implementation are showing here. Uh, in the right side, <coughs> a left side of this slide, we can see a flow chart as we work. In this system, various sensor MQ7, MQ135, DT, DST22, BMP280, and our range sensor measure real time weather parameters that is transmitted to. <coughs> and Ardu, uh, transmitted to the IoT platform ThingSpeak using an Arduino Uno with integrated analog to digital converter. This data is pretty clearly sent to the IoT cloud by Wi-Fi allowing user to access the monitor real time with the monitor data on ThingSpeak. Here is our result and performance evaluation. Figure 5 observed rainfall versus predicted rainfall. Here the observed rainfall uh, is directed by the blue graph and the predicted rainfall directed by the red graph. And the table 2 is 
a comparison of multiple machine learning techniques. Here we can see different uh, machine learning techniques uh, given uh, the precision uh, values, recall values, F1 score value, and the accuracy. In this, uh, sli from this slide, we can see uh, we have gotten our uh, highest accuracy from decision team make a uh, models and the lowest accuracy was uh, 3 percent from SBM models and the, uh, also we can also see the other uh, models accuracy where our accuracy was 84 percent for uh, linear regression uh, 86 percent for the uh, decision team models KNN models is uh, was uh, 85 percent and the uh, NB models are 81% accuracy. Table 3 to uh, Table 7 provides detailed information about the confusion matrix using, used during the training and testing phase of machine learning models that classify rainfall events. This table show how all the model identified actual rainfall events. Uh, classes and directly recognize the other types of events negative classes using historical rainfall data from Bangladesh, as I already said, from 1970 to 2016. Here is a positive uh, in the positive class was uh, no rain for a uh, positive true positive class was a uh, three. 37 and the two negative class was uh, 340 and uh, also a uh, uh, false negative class uh, positive class was uh, 380 and the false negative class was uh, 3 uh, 3164 as flow various environmental conditions including air quality gas for atmosphere pressure, temperature, ultraviolet radiation, and humidity are monitored those sensors at a specific location as shown in the figure six. Seven fields on ThinkSpeak are utilized for data collection. Figure seven illustrates the air quality time relationship, updating every two minutes within an average air quality value of 10. Figure eight shows sensors data over time also updating every two minutes interval with average below 100 to 1,001.6 respectively in figure A and B. Also, we can see the uh, another graph for humidity in the graph D for uh, air dust level in graph E, uh, also for carbon monoxide in graph F and the uh, UV value in graph G. Table 8 present a comprehensive comparison of IoT powered weather monitoring system. It summarizes different research methods, include the types of sensor used, system setup, web in integration, and the years of publication. Well, conclusion actually, we use five classification algorithms are utilized in our research paper, such as uh, linear regression, decision T, as I already said, nearest network support vector machines, and the neighbors. And uh, our decision T model achieved the highest accuracy, I already said, and the support vector machine uh, had the lowest accuracy. But our system is a flexible and a scalable, making it suitable for various application in weather monitoring or prediction. Uh, here is the references for this presentation. I reviewed the most of the papers for make this present also our research paper. If you have any question, let me know, please. Hello. Yes, there are questions. Uh, from the five classification that you have in the previous uh, slide, please. The five classification method to you use 
did you use it? What is the best uh, classify the, the data, the data set? Sorry, I didn't understand. Sir, our, uh, sir, our best model is uh, Nation T model, sir. Because uh, we uh, obtain the highest accuracy in the Nation T models. Yes, but why uh, which technique of machine learning do you provide better result or best or the best result? And where and which are uh, is the most easy to use? Actually, ma'am. Uh... The process is that uh, we collected our data uh, from a data set of we have used uh, sorry ma'am we have used a multiple uh, pre-processing step for uh, after collecting our data from Kingle in a Bangladeshi website feature extraction feature selection it is ma'am normalization the signals. Yes, because your title of your paper say a comparative analysis of machine learning algorithms. And my question is which of them, it is mean algorithms, it is the best for, for your specific problem. Rainfall for a gas. Did you listen? Uh, Ma'am, actually your voice wasn't clear to me. I didn't understand that your question. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, now the next presentation is uh, Marco Antonio Silva Maldonado is there. Giovanni Caicedo is there. Yes. Yes. Is in this work. Ah, Zakid, yes. Mohamed Zakid is there? Can you give me a moment, please? Oh, can it no, near? moment, moment. It's here. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, okay. Actually, ma'am, uh, I'm also presenting the this paper also. What is it? Can it be eyes there? Or Mohamed Sakif. Mohamed Sakif is there? Yes, I am here. Uh, Hanif Mia will present the presentation slide. Hanif Mia will present. It is possible to okay. present to the Hanif, please present your presentation. Oh. Okay, Hanif. Uh, Hanif, no, I'm are... uh, present here. I'm also presenting this paper. Yes, you also present this paper, and the speaker is Hanif Mia. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, can present this paper. 
who can present this paper? Mohamed Saki, can you present Sir, it? Ma I'm it is possible present. to present this paper or not? The paper in the 1970 will be presented or no? Yes, ma'am. And if, excuse me, uh, can you please share your screen, your slide, your presentation? Okay, sir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum again. This is Hanif Mia presenting our research paper, paper ID 97. We can see, we can see your slide presentation. Sorry, ma'am. It is, we see your slide presentation. Continue with the presentation, please. Okay, ma'am. This is Hanif Mia presenting my paper. The paper ID is 97. The topic is monitoring toxic gases in Dhaka Brooklyn area and comparing CNN versus ResNet for big planes identification by a satellite imagery in Bangladesh. Here is the uh, outline of my presentation. The outline of my presentation is abstract introduction, literature review methodology, result and discussion, conclusion and future work, also references. Our study proposed a cost effective, effective method for identifying big planes in Bangladesh using high resolution satellite imagery. Convolutional neural network and resonant deep learning models were used, achieving 100% accuracy in identifying chimney planes. We built an IoT based system using Arduino Uno, Node MCU, ESP8266, and the sens sensors are developed to detect carbon monoxide, hydrogen, also sulfur dioxide. Our experimental results revealed higher sensor reading in areas with polluted conditions. Uh, well, introduction. In our introduction part, we'll, uh, we described uh, this stud our study aims to develop a real-time hazardous gas monitoring system using IoT sensors, especially MQ7, MQ8, and MQ136 to address the long-term impacts of PM and hazard gases from big cleans on global environmental conditions and human health. Our research uh, contributes Big chimney cleans identification by using CNN and ResNet model in Bangladesh. A real time toxic gas monitoring from big clean area in Dhaka North City. Evaluation of model performance based on confusion matrix. Numerous research endeavors have utilized various deep learning techniques to accurately identify big cleans and employ OLS sensor for toxic gas monitoring application as documented in the literature. We reviewed many of the uh, articles and the studies. We find that uh, most of the authors focused only IoT based system, hotspot and I also IoT based system, um, only deep learning based system, but they didn't focus on CNN, ResNet, also deep learning. But we focused both deep learning method, CNN, ResNet, also we used satellite version and uh, IoT. This section outlined the, the uh, deep learning techniques and data set used to identify big cleans in Bangladesh. 
various sensor are deployed to collect data within the geographic coordinates of Dhaka Biklin area in the Dhaka North City, Bangladesh. The experiment methodology is illustrated in Figure One. We collecting, uh, we downloading, uh, download the data from Kengal website. Uh, After that, we preprocess the data, uh, doing image uh, resize, data subsetting, normalization, level assign in text file zero or one. After that, we train our model using ID numbers and levels. Model training to check performance of the models. Model testing by using ID numbers and the levels. Point mapping generation to locate each big clean in the imagery. And the result is we set it to zero for no chimney and the one for chimney clean. Uh, also, the right, uh, right side, we can see the hardware implementation where an Arduino Uno uh, connected with uh, three sensors connected with the Arduino Uno and the Arduino Uno connected with ESP8266 uh, internet provider circuit and the signal sent to the ThingSpeak API website. Uh, table one outlines model training parameters, emphasizing MFOs for high accuracy, model evaluates training and validation, validation errors, stropping training when validation errors reaches minimum. Here we can, uh, here are the uh, deep learning models parameter for training. The mode was training mode, image height, and the uh, image width was uh, 256 and we use three image channels and the two number of classes we already said uh, i already said zero for no chimney clean or one for chimney clean and normalization coordinates it was two and the base side was 32 and it was 10 times uh, in figure two we see a various kind of big chimney cleans either visible or not in satellite imagery in the first two images in the above of the uh, figure we can see there is no chimney detect and the uh, next uh, picture picture c and d here we can see the, the uh the uh, our model detect a chimney is located here our device development and implementation as already said, we collected data. Uh, hardware, we collected data from the sensor. After that, the collecting data uh, to sending the data to the ThingSpeak through internet. And the uh, right side is showing the uh, suggested cloud-based monitoring architecture. For the DSA, we developed the sensor. And through internet, we transmit the uh, data using api key to the cloud uh, system and the we from receiving the application and the signal return to the applications in this section we can uh, see a uh, cnn versus resnet model evaluation and the figure 5 training is the training accuracy and the validation loss plot against epoch using cnn here we can see uh, in the x axis is the FOS uh, and the <coughs> y axis is uh, defined accuracy. Starting in the image we, uh, graph, we can see the, the, the accuracy was very low, but uh, approach by approach the accuracy remained high. And the, uh, starting in the image, the approach losses was very high, but the end of the uh, uh, testing, the losses was very low also in the we can see in the resnet uh, resnet uh, training uh, models our results that the resnet model out from <clears throat> out from the cnn model in minimum batch accuracy surprising it after 10 approach of nine iteration as showing in the table two and three in the uh, table two comparative analysis of resonant model accuracy and loss here we can see uh, from iteration one to three iteration uh, 900 uh, our minimum batch accuracy was 90 percent and the loss was 48 percent and the in uh, table three the comparative analysis of cnn model accuracy loss and the, the uh, uh, 
end of the day, uh, after nine, uh, 900 iteration, we obtained uh, 85, uh, 86% accuracy. Minimum batch accuracy, validity accuracy was 76%. Also, the loss was as shown in the uh, 0.65%. The ResNet and CNN models accuracy and the other uh, metrics are assigned using <coughs> the uh, table. Uh, the predicted results are evaluated against the ground truth using a confusion matrix to access overall accuracy and other metrics. Table 4 display displays the confusion matrix and assessment matrix of ResNet and CNN models. We conducted a comparative analysis of model prediction utilizing the Bangladesh government satellite data set obtained from the Kangal database. This analysis involved manual verification to identify matches between the CNN and ResNet prediction within all kind of the model predicted chimney clean our finding revealed a match for 3,751 chimney cleans with no unmatched chimney cleans in the government data for nor in our model prediction. It is important to note that we meticulously hand build that all positive images detected by our model. The monitoring toxic gas gases in the big clean area of Dhaka northern city location is conducted using advanced sensor is illustrated in figure 8. The data collection process is facilitated though three fields on the ThinkSpeak platform. Figure 9 depicts the concentration of carbon monoxide with data being updated at 10 minute intervals. The recorded average carbon monoxide concentration range from 100 parts per million to 500 parts per million, indicating that the air quality during the monitoring period was extremely hazardous to human health. Figure, figure 10 illustrates the concentration of hydrogen also updated every 10 minutes. Also figure uh, 11 <coughs> illustrates the concentration of sulfur dioxide also updating in every 10 minutes. Table 5 provides a comprehensive analysis of IoT-powered toxic gas monitoring system, detailing various research methods, sensor types, system setup, web integration, and publication years. Well, in the conclusion, a uh, deep learning method using CNN and ResNet architectures achieved 100% accuracy in identifying big cleans by satellite imagery. A real time system for detecting and classifying cleans help access environmental impacts. A sensor based system using Arduino and S sensor monitor clean emissions, finding highlight the need for industry reform to reduce environmental and carbon. Impacts. Our future work includes improving scalability, integrating more advanced sensor, and expanding the model to detect additional environmental pollutions. Here is our references for using in the presentation, also in our papers. If you have any question, please let me know. Yes. There are some questions from the audience or from the remote audience. There are some questions. Uh, this uh, information that I said that you take for Bangladesh. Is uh, tested in another yes, in the same way in another area. Your data yeah. is from Bangladesh. You tested other area with this uh, 
with the same methodology yes, and the results are similar or are better? Yes, ma'am, it was uh, similar. In which other area do you other researchers use them? Uh, other researchers use them same data set. The data set is recorded for you or are in the in any repository? Um, you compare um, your methodology with other data sets in other area? Yes, ma'am. Results are similar or is ma'am it most probably is uh, around similar? Are similar. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm very good. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, ma'am. The next presenter is Giovanni Cainzetto. Uh, no, no, it's Giovanni. Oh, it's not a police work. It has yeah, a second. <laughs> Will be the speaker will be Marco, Marco Antonio Silva Maldonado. We have Marco Antonio. Marco Antonio. Okay. Marco Antonio Maldonado is there for present the paper for set. For set. Uh, hi, I'm here. Could you share with us the your slides presentation? Yeah. Um, okay. Good. It's okay. Uh, it's okay, Marco Antonio. Uh, can you please uh, turn on your webcam? Yeah. Thanks. You have up to 15 minutes for your presentation and later five minutes for question. Uh, it's okay or no uh, please share your presentation the camera uh, you can see yeah yeah ah, okay. Your camera, it's okay you can okay. it's okay uh, for please your presentation okay, okay. It's okay. Okay, uh, hi, good afternoon. My name is Marco Silva, and today I will present your research on the development of wind speed forecast model using artificial intelligence in Mexicali. This project was carried out in the Instituto Tecnológico de Mexicali and focused on applying AI to improve wind speed prediction and optimize energy creation. The authors. This project was conducted by a team. Marco and Carlos worked on genetic algorithms, GI model, Chave development, the transformer and ELSTM model, and Ibarra implemented the PSO model. Marcos serves as boot advisor and reviewer for the project, while Apollonio provided external advisory support. Content. This slide shows the section that will be covered in this presentation. Introduction. Wild energy is highly dependent on a current wind speed forecast, but Wide speed variably 
present a major challenge in predictable challenge change and wind patterns reduce the efficiency of wind, wind turbine and make it difficult to maintain consistent energy output. In this project, AI models are employed to improve the accuracy of wind spin forecast, helping to optimize energy generation and reduce operation cost. Objectives. The main objective is this project is to develop it, develop it and evaluate AI-based models for wind speed forecasting in Mexicali. The goal is to improve prediction, accurate, and optimize wind energy production by implementing advanced EA technologies. Methodology. Models implemented. In this study, four models, the, the EA were implemented for wind speed forecasting. The generic algorithms was used to optimize ARMA 5.3 model. Particle swap optimization, PSO, was applied to optimize the coefficients of an ARMA 8.6 model. In addition, deep learning models like Transformer and ESTM were used to capture long-term dependence in wind speed data, providing inherent prediction capabilities. Data employed. The GA model was training using local data of meteorology, meteorological data collected from weather station in Mexicali, in the Instituto Tecnológico de Mexicali, which provide 3,000 wind speed measurement. The PSO transformer and LSTM model were trained and validated using online wind speed dataset. The difference in data source playing a critical role in the performance and comparison of three models. Evaluation metrics. So assess the, the performance of each model, we use it two K metrics. A RMSE, root mean square error, and MAE, mean absolute error. RMS measurement the average magnitude of errors in prediction, while my calculate the main absolute difference between predicted and actual values. Lower values for the test metrics indicate better model performance. Case study Mexicali. This study case used wind speed data from Mexicali. The GIA model was entered on data from local wear station, achieving high accuracy. PSO models and transformer and LSTM used data from public web page. Resulting is a more variability due to the difference in data source. Comparative results. GA model results. The genetic algorithms GA model delivered excellent performance with the ARMS, RMSA of 0 0.030 and MAE of 0 0.236. The models and training time was only 11. Point fifty six seconds, which highlights its efficient efficiently. This allowed GA model to be applied for the real time wind speed prediction in the local conditions, making it a highly efficient for practical wind speed optimization. 
this is the graph, uh, the data, wind data, real time, and generated. PSO transformer and ELSTM results. Compared to so the GA model, the PSO transformer and LSTM model showed high RMS, RMS and my valves, indicating less accuracy in the wind speed forecasting. PSO also had a slower convergence while to so deep learning models. Transformer and LSTM required more computational resource. This, despite this, the transformer model demonstrated potential for real time prediction through with heightened variability due the so the data sources. Comparison limitations. A dictionary comparison between the GA and PSO models is a limited the so the use of different data sets. The GA model benefited from localized data collected from the weather station in Mexicali, which, which provide consistent and accurate results. On the other hand, PSO and Transformer and LSTM use data sets online, introducing variability in the prediction this difference is the data sources affected affected the overall accuracy and performance of the models. Conclusions. In conclusion, the GA model uh, genetic algorithms proved to be most effective in this study, delivering the lower RM, 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 RMSE and MAE values and the most trained high accuracy, accuracy in real-time wind speed forecasting. The PSO transformer and LSTM model, while useful, showed high variability in their prediction the so difference in data sources and computational requirements. Overall, AI-based model hold a great potential for Improvision, improving wind speed forecast and optimizing wind energy production in Mexicali. This is conclusion the presentation. Thank you for attention. I'm happy to answer any question you have me. If a question from the audience, press the video conference. Sorry? You tested, did you tested uh, the same algorithms in this similar situation in another place? No. Um, overall, I is in Mexicali and the university. Um, I don't uh, try in other side. Because this uh, kind of data set is in different repository for climate, uh, for different station in the country and in the different place, there exists uh, this kind of uh, uh, mechanical dispositive to produce electricity. Yeah, uh, uh, one moment. We can try in somewhere else. Uh, so uh, I was in the meteorological uh, weather in the university. My other uh, team uh, uses the data website. So I can try data from the web, but uh, I don't try. Because for uh, conclude 
that uh, some tools are good, it is necessary at least to test two different cases, case of a study. Okay. To conclude that it is good or not, or what is the difference between different techniques and so on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. For your presentation. Thank you. Now the response. Is there? Oh, the you can present to you. In the presentation, is the paper. Yes, give me a I will give you your okay. Thank you. Okay. No. What is your flag? Uh, well, 154. No, but things one last thing. No, 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 they have four minutes. Yes, the presentation is going to happen.
dreams. Okay. It's okay. Okay, we are ready. Okay. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about the low cost portable prototype for water quality monitoring. Uh, our team made of uh, Diana Peralta Garcia, I'm in Peralta Borda, Diana Peralta Londoño, my person, uh, Ivan Kisser. Sorry, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, for the presentation, uh, I, you know, at the beginning, I will talk about the introduction, objective, uh, the follower uh, methodology, design and implementation, mobile application features, uh, new code comparison between other uh, devices, and finally, discuss the results and conclusions. Uh, you can see the sustainable development goals. Uh, it's a roadmap uh, made by the United Nations for development, the development that the countries. And we are focused in uh, number six and number nine goals. And the number six uh, talk about the clean water and sanitation. And the number nine talk about the innovation. Why innovation? Uh, because uh, we want to implement, it, to implement a low cost of table prototype. And why in clean water? Uh, because the, those prototypes uh, are for the water quality monitoring. Uh, so by the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States, they say uh, there are a total of three parameters to indicate the situation of water, uh, divided into three categories. And we select uh, six parameters, uh, temperature, condu electrical conductivity, total dissolved solids, pH, dissolves oxygen, and turbidity. And those parameters uh, allow us to have a um, first diagnostic to the water quality of the water quality. Uh, we are located in the metropolitan area of Valledupar, in the Colombian Caribbean, uh, specifically in the municipalities of La Paz and Managre. And those communities uh, present an intermittent water supply and they need to uh, to store the water in different tanks and uh, use the new resources uh, to uh, use the water for different activities and uh, they need to uh, know the importance of water and the and the water situation and the different uh, multi-parameters prof in, in the market uh, uh, can can be expensive to the those communities, and um, for this, uh, the main objective of this of this work, work is to uh, implement a low cost portable prototype for monitoring the water quality parameters. And the specific objective 
part, they will allow the software to monitor the parameter from a mobile phone and upload the data to the cloud for checking purposes, implement the hardware using low coverage commercial components, and help communities understand the importance of water quality and so then how to use uh, the prototype. Uh, for the previous prototype, uh, in the prototype, prototype uh, we used a uh, ESP32 mounted on remote the one mini, and it has uh, three sensors for four parameters. A uh, first sensor is uh, of temperature, and it has a uh, digital output, and another sensors uh, have an uh, analog output. output. With the last uh, sensor, uh, we measure two parameters uh, because the uh, because there is a relationship between them. Uh, so total dissolved solid is equal to half electrical conductivity. For the water monitoring, the parameters showed in uh, OLED display model and uh, uh, can connect to the mobile app. Mobile app. Uh, to the first the second prototype uh, is currently in development and add two parameters more, the support and turbidity, and change the SP32 uh, with uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, because we want to uh, implement uh, advanced algorithms or, or machine learning in the future. Uh, at the beginning, the citizens or users uh, can be used, uh, can use uh, only the prototype uh, to water quality monitoring and calibration of the sensors and connect to mobile lab uh, via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth low energy. And the mobile lab, mobile lab allows the real-time monitoring, uh, calibration the sensor with a step-by-step intuitive process and to plot the uh, data to cloud database and deploy it in Firebase out through the API uh, developed in, uh, with Python. Uh, if the mobile phone uh, doesn't uh, have a, a stable connection to internet, uh, the user can uh, save the data in a local database and when the connection uh, it is, uh, is stable, uh, the data sync to the cloud database. And finally, the old, old citizens uh, can access to the web application where they uh, can see the different uh, measurements uh, in your location. For the software development, uh, we follow uh, those steps. Uh, first, uh, design, we designed the Mokaham prototype uh, uh, based on uh, based on initial requirements. And the next uh, development, the first functional version uh, with the initial requirements. For testing uh, with early users, and with those, uh, those users, uh, mega reviews and feedback, and this feedback incorporating in the uh, software. And finally, the software is continuous development and adjustment uh, to satisfy the requirements of, of the users. Uh, the same impl implementation, the same implementation, uh, we use a, a low code commercial models for, for the sensors. And uh, the uh, first implementation has uh, 12 centimeters uh, of height and 9 centimeter centimeters of width on the top. And the mobile application features, uh, first the application identify the identify the prototype connected, uh, also the device ID and the test the uh, available sensors, uh, and allows the uh, real time monitoring and also the uh, these those dots um, indicators and uh, the users uh, can enable and disable the different parameters to uh, monitoring the the samples. Uh, the data can uh, upload to a cloud database, uh, also the new uh, USA phone, uh, and uh, can make a, a state by state uh, service or calibration of the different uh, prototype. And finally, the users uh, 
can be, can show the historical data uh, saved in the cloud database, with also the different uh, graph and information. And uh, also uh, can share the your data in Excel tables by uh, WhatsApp or email. And this is the more uh, the, the web app application uh, where the users uh, can see the different measurements in the metropolitan area of Valledupar and the information or the water quality in, in their zone. And we compare it uh, with to another uh, commercial uh, multi-parameter proof and it, uh, they have uh, four parameters and doesn't have a mobile app. Uh, our prototype uh, can connect to the mobile application and uh, save the, the data in the cloud storage. Uh, the code of our prototype is uh, about 100 CD1 dollars and another prototype, another uh, a prop uh, can uh, cost uh, a double or triple of our cost. And the results, uh, for the results, we compared the, the measurements of our prototype with a commercial proof, HANA HI98, and the difference uh, between the measurement of pH and uh, uh, total of solids uh, are uh, low. Uh, for the uh, citizen science, uh, the workshops were conducted at uh, different communities uh, and schools near to to Bayer City uh, to explain the importance of water and how to use a different multi-parameter prof and prototype uh, for a more uh, water quality monitoring. Uh, finally, the conclusion are the combination of the software and hardware allowed for, allowed for development of optimized multi-parameter probe. And the, those probes uh, offer an efficient and cost-effective uh, way to measure multiple, multiply uh, water quality parameters. And workshops and training on the prototype have been essential to raise an awareness about the impacts of water quality. Uh, special acknowledgement uh, to Sociedad Colombiana Ingeniería Física, Ministerio de Ciencia, Tecnología e Innovación de Colombia y, and the Universidad Popular de Cesar. Thanks for your attention. Questions? I have one question. So, did you plan, did you, you say that you send the information to the cloud? Yes. yes. Okay. How can the sending of information to the cloud be ensured? Because these communities you usually don't doesn't have internet connection. How can you ensure okay. that? Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, first, uh, if the the community uh, can be can be located in remote areas. Area, uh, the in, initially the data can uh, uh, the save in the local database on mobile phone, and the, when the users uh, can uh, users uh, have a inner connection, the data is automatically automatically uh, uploaded to cloud database. But in that case that you don't have internet, the internet, the, the excuse me, the device mm -hmm. um, uh, save the information and later send it yes. to the internet? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. And later send to cloud database. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. thanks. Thanks. Uh, another question? Uh, do you work this uh, other, other question? Your work is uh, for the moment for the for measure the quality of the water yes. to drink. Yes, to drink water. Uh, fresh water. And to say it is possible to use it as good quality a good water. Oh, but uh, for treatment of the residual uh, water 
it is possible to use the same infrastructure? At the moment, uh, the prototype uh, don't, don't, don't can, uh, can cannot use in the residual world uh, because the range of, uh, uh, of sensors uh, is uh, limited to the fresh water because in another uh, implementations, uh, we want to implement a, a more range of different sensors to uh, more different water resources. Because the residual water can uh, have the same, has the same parameters yes. to be measured. Yes. What, can, uh, what are the difference between good water and bad water? Uh, Recycling this water. For example, water. for example, in the, uh, the electrical connectivity of the fresh water is more low to the residual water because the residual water uh, can be uh, contaminated to, uh, with another uh, another uh, another thing. Yes, for yes. But if you only measure the output of this treatment, that we can uh, residual water, uh, residual water. Cold. You treat this water, and you can recycle this water as a good water. Then you use the same parameters. The parameters don't change. Yes, yes. The the, the parameters of of the. It's kind of residual water in the same, and at this moment, uh, don't uh, don't use the prototype in this case. Does this mean that you don't have a treatment for the bad water, for instance, residual or recycled the water that is used, for instance, in the and uh, the okay and. If the community is recycling the water, uh, yes, the family work uh, can be uh, measured with the prototype with uh, the, the range of, of parameters that can be uh, in the in this, in this case in the range. As the way to assess the water output from this treatment, for this treatment. No, it's the same. The, is the same prototype that can be used for. There is other question from the audience. Thank you, Thank you very much for joining the Thank you. Thank you. The paper is the 164. The presenter is there. Juan Sebastian Sanchez Gomez for the paper Transportation Model and Supervisor Learning Method to Minimize Food Was in the School of Medellin. Excuse me, uh, Christian Ayala. Hi for everyone. I'm trying to share my screen, so give me a moment, please. You are you are moderator. Uh, you can share your screen, please. Yeah. Can you see my screen yet? No. Uh, no, it doesn't work. And uh, let me check again. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. Ah, uh, someone is sharing their screen, so I can't sure. share mine. Okay. 
Ok. Ok, ok. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm trying to share my screen. Yeah. Ok. Yeah, it works. We are. Ok, so hi for everyone. Uh, we are Christian Ayala and Police Industrial Engineering Team uh, with the direction of the Professor Juan Sebastián Sánchez. And uh, today we are going to talk about transportation um, models and unsupervised and unsupervised and uh, unsupervised learning methods uh, to minimize food waste in, in school of medicine in next okay uh, before to present uh, to you uh, the, the main activities that we did in the project it's important to understand what's happening in Colombia around food security and around uh, this kind of uh, wasting uh, activities in in the in the country especially in the city uh, as w, uh, wpf says uh, in in 2023 in Colombia uh, um, 25% of the population uh, re, uh, stays in moderate and severely food insecurity. Uh, also, uh, in Colombia, uh, there are 20, uh, 32 departments uh, in this territory, but uh, we are focusing in Antioquia, uh, as we can see in the heat map, uh, it reached the 26% of that prevail in moderate and uh, in severe food wasting and uh, food insecurity, I'm sorry. Um, Okay. Next. Okay. If the main purpose of the project is to show you how how we can uh, make some proposal routes for uh, the uh, schools meal program operators to uh, understand uh, how it they uh, how they can make uh, some. Bene uh, benefits. Uh, I'm sorry. The, the main purpose is to show some proposal routes uh, for the school meal programs operator in the effort to uh, minimize food waste uh, in some critical areas using unsupervised, uh, unsupervised learning methods and transportation models. Uh, Okay, the, uh, it's important to keep in mind that uh, for the development of the project, we need to keep in mind uh, some key points, that which uh, there are specific the demand, the uh, quantity for the uh, delivery, uh, delivery, the quantity for the, the delivery, and the schedule. It's important to analyze that. Um, the, the food must uh, deliberate in a specific time, as in the project we talk about 8 to uh, 11 a.m. Also, the requirements for the project or for the develop uh, at the solution is use a VRP solver tool. Uh, we as students, we use the Erdogan's uh, VRP solver tool, uh, which is an Excel tool that, that use uh, an API with Microsoft uh, Bing Maps. Uh, and this tool help us to um, share some routes, some proposal routes. Um, the characterization of uh, some critical areas in Medellin is also important. We took some data, data sets of uh, Danny that is here uh, an important a research or a repository. And uh, also uh, understand that uh, about 30% of uh, food that is in uh, uh, district marketplaces are uh, wasted and um, yeah. Uh, 
uh, due to understand the requirements for the project, it's important to uh, analyze and characterize uh, how we are positioned in uh, the city. Uh, as we can see in, in this little map, uh, we uh, may make some, some points of critical areas and also the possible um, uh, centers of waste. Uh, and also describes how the possible benefactors are in the northeast of the city and possible food uh, waste uh, points are in the southwest. Uh, and also, in, as I mentioned before, the 30% of district uh, marketplaces are waste because the sellers uh, doesn't know, uh, doesn't know uh, what we what they can do with uh, the food that they don't they can't uh, sell. Next. Okay. Um, the psychi, uh, the psyche learn in Python has a key, a key means library inside, which uh, use uh, which is a unsupervised learning method that we use for uh, separate or make clusters inside the the zones for um, minimize or uh, separate different zones in the city. So uh, the the uh, every each clusters has a nearest uh, supply centers to real to be a possible benefactor or a possible waste uh, center. Um, the assignment of uh, the centroids uh, it's so important for looking the nearest uh, safe place that it will be an action point uh, inside the city. So no. Not only not all the places in the city are a safe place, because uh, I, as we are talking about vulnerable vulnerable zones, uh, its security it um, helps, but doesn't help a lot for these kind of activities. Uh, so yeah, uh, the centroids of each uh, cluster helps us to identify. Uh, nearest safe uh, center and action points. Uh, in in the project, we use uh, uh, as I said before a VRP solver application, which is uh, uh, developed uh, developed by uh, Gons Erdogan, that provides an excellent tool which is saving savings every six, and this tool helps helps of to us to create uh, these proposal routes. So uh, analyzing all the information, we need to uh, understand that who are the clients, uh, which kind of vehicles we will use, uh, this kind of routes of data, which is uh, talking about uh, distances, uh, about depots and clients or customers. And uh, understand some parameters, as I say, I said before, uh, the schedule, the quality, and the specific demand, uh, and also the concentrate every everything in one depot to share for these uh, vulnerable areas. This is the transport model. Uh, is for savings uh, or. Uh, understanding the all the cost the cost that we can uh, analyze for the project and uh, it use uh, three different points which is origin dest destiny and vehicles also it, um, uh, it uh, have in mind some uh, restrictions as cost uh, binary distance arcs and all the uh, things that we can need to for the for the develop of the project. Well, finally, many proposals routes can be created by the intrication uh, about uh, this kind of Excel tool, which is for Erdogan, by Erdogan, and uh, 
the, the his map uh, that uh, Microsoft APA uh, Bing Maps can um, share with us. Uh, it can represent many his maps, GAS maps, for representing uh, this kind of proposals for uh, making easier decision. It, uh, as you can see, it shows a lot uh, how one proposal route can be created and in how it can works. Um, well, uh, in summary, uh, propose different routing plans for the school meals program using transportation methods and unsupervised learning methods. It's possible and it can be a potential way to contribute in the effort to minimize the waste and uh, in the effort to uh, fight up over the food insecurity in Colombia, in, in, in Colombia and in the world. Uh, also, it can be developed uh, for other places, countries, uh, zones, and wherever you, you want. And yeah, I thank you for your time. For uh, yeah. Thanks for listening. Are there any questions from the audience? Present or Yeah, I have some questions. What are the unsupervised learning methods that you use? And which one is the best? Uh, yeah, we used a uh, K means, which is the unsupervised method that we uh, used uh, for the project because it makes a uh, clustering in, in Python. Uh, is for uh, scikit learned and help uh, us to uh, separate some vulnerable, uh, vulnerable areas and uh, identify nearest places for don't uh, have all the vulnerable zone. So uh, be specific in different uh, places as we can, we can see in, the, in this slide. The key main, the key main means uh, help us to separate and as uh, and thanks to uh, separate different zones uh, areas in this in the main zone uh, we can be uh, we can have different action points and try to uh, uh, do the the proposal rules. We understand that not all the places can be uh, benefactors. Uh, so one of uh, one of one can be a, be a benefit of these kind of, these proposal roads. One yes, of the but time. which technique which technique do you use it in machine learning to determine the centroid, for instance? You put in this mesh. Yeah, it means five uh, five centroid. Which Technique in your supervisor learning to you use it to determine that these centroids are the best. For well, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, or how did uh, you put this centroid though? Kim, Kim, Kim means uh, made everything calculating distance between each point. So we made uh, um, a yes, but giving you. Centroid, you calculate the Euclidean, you use the Euclidean method. Yeah, we calculate the centroid. Determine this centroid. The, the, the you need specific. to use a machine learning technique to determine centroid. Yeah, key means. This uh, way is, to uh, determine uh, that this centroid is the good centroid. By, by distances, yeah, by distances, uh, we put in the clustering application, as you said, uh, I, as I, I, as I mentioned before, uh, the clusterings uh, are put by us uh, by a technique which is called a, a technical codo, 
for uh, understand how many clusters we can do in the in the application but of, of key means also uh, look uh, in key means uses um, distance uh, Euclidean distance between each point to search inside the cluster that as I say uh, and uh, yeah it I, this is how it works uh, look, calculating distances between how uh, the quantity of clusters we uh, put in the machine learning uh, uh, but well, unsupervising learning uh, method. So yeah, as when we have when we had this intro, we um, search or looking for the nearest uh, in the real world uh, point using Euclidean distances and uh, key means uses uh, this kind of um, Euclidean distances calculated or the triangle distances. Any other question? Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you for your time. My time is fine. Because it's not about it. Yes. We closed this session. We closed this session. Uh, and we thanks for your uh, presence. Not for your well, attending conference. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes.